Shalom, this is Teresa Lewis with the Rekai Israeli Beit Midrash. I have a message for women this morning. Um, I have a few remarks in regards to the new year. Hallelujah. So uh, we will be observing uh, the biblical new year uh, beginning the month of the first month of the Hebrew calendar, uh, the month of Aviv, also known as the month of Nisan, tomorrow evening. Uh, this is 2021 and tomorrow is, I think it's March 14th, Mar March 14th that evening. Uh, that's when we will be observing the new year. Uh, and just some remarks on the new year, whenever you are observing the new year, uh, mind you, because we have a million calendars in our Hebraic communities. Uh, but be that as it may, um, it's a beautiful day in Pittsburgh. Uh, sun, it's it's beaming. Uh, the birds are chirping. The, the little windmills are are blowing and turning and spinning. Uh, I hear some, uh, you know, some uh, yard work. Um, it's Shabbat. We're not doing yard work, but I hear some yard work in the distance. Um, you know, this is a time of refreshing. It's a time of new beginning. The, the trees are starting to. But the uh, hedges are starting to get some new green leaves on them. Um, and, you know, we are moving into spring. You know, we're moving away from winter where all the growth occurs under the earth, under the ground, in the soil, uh, where we can't see it, to where now it's springing up and we're able to uh, see it. And so this is a time for, for new beginnings. Uh, my husband, Moray Adamiyahu, uh, is currently filling up uh, our mikvah pool um, because there's going to be an immersion today. Hallelujah. Um, you know, someone giving their life to the Most High, deciding to walk with Yeshua 100%, no turning back, no turning back. Hallelujah. Um, and so this is a new beginning uh, of life, uh, a, a rebirth, you know, a, a new birthing, a, 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 new, uh, a new start, you know, uh, time to recharge, time to re-energize, um, time to become renewed, renewed mind, you know, renewed you, new, renewed relationships. Uh, hit that, hit that refresh button. You know, sometimes when things, uh, electronics, uh, you know, they, they start to get slow. What do we do? We turn them off and we turn them back on, right? That's the first thing to do if you have a technical problem is to turn the thing off, turn it back on again. Maybe even wait a few seconds, maybe even press that button in for a few seconds you know you don't just hit the button but you know do a hard reset even on the apple phone when you used to have the button you used to hit the button and the on button hold it in and then the uh, apple would come back up on the screen i'm talking to apple users now um but time for a reset refreshing regeneration renewal you know new mind new focus new vision new you okay um and all of this moving in the direction of the most high moving in the direction of righteousness uh, moving in the direction of repentance um acts 3 <laughs> verse 19 uh says here repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the master and so this time is a time of refreshing. It's a time of renewal. Walking in function, we recognize that this is a time of refreshing and renewal. Walking in function, we recognize that we must repent and be converted. Uh, there is no such thing as repentance without conversion. If you repent, you, uh, the word repent is teshuvah, right? You're walking in one direction. Repenting is saying, sorry, ya, sorry. Sorry in Hebrew is salicha, salicha, salicha. Okay, so apologizing to Yah, saying, I'm not going to do that again, and then turning yourself and coming back to Him. That's what that's what that is. Okay, so this is a necessary component of renewal is repentance and conversion, change. Okay, um, growth, right. Um, and so as we're moving into this season of unleavened bread, um, approximately two weeks away at this point, uh, Passover and unleavened bread, um, you know, I might, uh, y'all willing, 
put out a few more videos, at least one video uh, in regards to uh, unleavened bread. But one of the questions that I asked the women on our prayer call, our uh, directed cot prayer call was, uh, you know, where is the leaven at? Where is it? You know, and, and the leaven is all over. It's in the atmosphere. If you think about uh, bread, if you think about the actual bread, the sourdough bread, all you have to do is just have some flour and some water. And if you leave that flour and water out on the counter, I might actually do this in a video, <laughs> but if you leave that flour and water on the counter, after a few days, there's going to be bubbles in it. Okay. And that bubbling up is yeast. The yeast is in the atmosphere and so this is catching the yeast and the yeast is reproducing in it and uh and then you know eventually if it doesn't spoil if you keep it nice uh you could use that as a, a sourdough starter and you can actually make bread with it that will rise and so all it was was just some it was some flour and some water that sat on a counter okay so so yeah so paul says that you know, he says to get rid of the old leaven um, because you are unleavened. That's what he says. And he says, you are unleavened. So we are unleavened. <laughs> if we have repented and we have changed and we are genuine in every single thing that we do, we rep that are, is wrong and against the most high, we, we say salicha and we move and we turn back to him. Okay. Um, but where is this leaven at? You know, the leaven is, is all around. Okay. It's all around. And if we, uh, aren't vigilant on that, getting that leaven out. Okay. Then we will become leaven just like that, that flour and water that's sitting out on the counter. It starts out on leaven, right? But then it just collects the leaven. It collects the leaven. It collects it. It collects that yeast and then it becomes leaven okay so we have to be about getting the yeast out right and putting a cap on our container that that uh lets the air out but doesn't let that air come in um so i uh just in regards to that um you know you don't have to necessarily even do something for that leaven uh to come in right because just by virtue of being alive uh, uh, situations are going to present themselves in your life that's going to try to 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 uh, stoke up and to to flame up and flare up your carnal mind and your carnal uh, appetites and, and just uh, resurrect. See, this is why uh, immersion is so important. We when we are uh, immersed, we are buried with the Messiah that we may re rise up and live with Him. Right? We die to self so that we may live for Messiah. And so uh, situations and circumstances and people, human beings, uh, being human beings, uh, you know, your children, uh, your husband, uh, your, <laughs> your parents, somebody, right? Somebody is going to uh, do something that's going to try to make you go back to your uh, former self that was buried in that water. Um, and that is something that is called loving. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is something that is is uh, increasing your ego, you know, bringing it back into full effect. And so our uh, role in the Ruach and the Holy Spirit um, is to quench all of that, you know, nip it in the bud, okay? Because uh, you can't allow those things to grow and rise up because that is leaven in your heart and in your spirit and in your life. Um, and so we have to be vigilant against the leaven, especially in this time of refreshing. If we want refreshing from on high, we have to do our part in that refreshing, um, in that renewal, in that restoration. We have to have a cup that is ready to be filled only by the Ruach, only by the Most High, and not by the yeast, not by the, the ambient yeast that is in the atmosphere. Um, we have to be vigilant when we see uh, our old self creeping up, uh, when we see our tempers flaring, when we see uh, how we are uh, treating the Most High, you know, are we are we uh, on fire for Him? You know, are we on fire for His purposes and for His will in our life? Um, how are we treating each other? How are we treating our spouses? How are we treating our children? How are we treating those in need? How are we treating those who uh, are looking at us and our example? Are we being a good example? Or are we being a bad example? 
Um, and all of these things are things that we, uh, as Hebrew women in particular, uh, need to think about and focus on. So this is my remarks regarding the new year. Um, I just pray that it, it's been a blessing uh, for Hebrew women who, uh, you know, this is not just for <laughs> new Hebrew women coming in, uh, but also for women who've been doing this for some time. We all need a reminder. You know, we all need to um, stay focused, stay vigilant, uh, and receive the refreshing that's coming. You know, the refreshing is coming. The question is, are we receiving it? You know, Messiah came into this world and most of this world did not receive him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the Torah was given by the creator of the universe. And the word Torah is something that many people don't even know what, what that means. So, um, you know, if you're watching this video, you're one of the few, <laughs> hallelujah, that has received and that know the most high, the creator of the universe. Um, and it's time for us to get into the mode and the season that he has for us, which is refreshing, renewal, regeneration. Hallelujah. Yah bless.